Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. You're watching Alaska Weather with us on this 13th of February. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. And you can do that easily by calling us at the Alaska Weather Information Line, a toll-free call inside of Alaska at 1-800-472-0391. Find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska. You can get to your local weather information just a little bit faster if you go ahead and use weather.gov slash Juno, weather.gov slash Anchorage for South Central and Southwest, or for the interior, the west coast, or the arctic coast, weather.gov slash Fairbanks. Looking for ice thickness or snowfall information, head to the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center, weather.gov slash APRFC. And for aviation weather uh, information all around the state, weather.gov slash AAWU, the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit there, of course. If you can't find what you're looking for, please let me know. I'm happy to serve you any way I possibly can. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is how you find me. Here's a look at the warnings that we have out today. Uh, winter weather advisories and warnings are posted across the interior. Some of these likely extend eastward into the uh, Alaska Range uh, at around Denali and into the Tanana region, as well as the west coast. And in the advisory regions, wind chill values could stretch from 45 to 55 below. It's already cold. Temperatures are 20 to 40 below zero in most of these locations, and the winds will continue to blow even at 10 to 15 miles per hour, which isn't a whole lot in most uh, times of the year. When it's this cold, just that little extra push of wind makes it feel much, much worse, and dangerously so. A wind chill warning is in effect for the northwest coast, and in that region with blowing wind, we could be talking about a feels-like index on your skin it could be 55 to 70 below, and it looks like these advisories and warnings will likely continue as we head through Friday and on into Saturday afternoon. Don't be surprised to see some of these advisories change. What that means is some of the cold could be lessening somewhat, or the wind could be lessening somewhat as we get into your Friday and Saturday. The likely spots where we would see changes probably here in some of our southern locations, but as we go through the weekend, it looks like wind will have a much better chance of staying up and blowing across the northwest coast especially. So plan for cold and plan for uh, safety. Uh, so make sure that someone knows that you're coming. Make sure that you've got a plan and know who just left. And make sure you have a plan in case something goes wrong along the way, whether that means you're packing supplies or you're ready to go get somebody in case they get stuck. Ten minutes out there is all you need to get some serious frostbite in that kind of weather. As we're looking at a satellite picture today, pretty easy to see where the really big active weather is way out there in the Aleutians. Uh, this time of the year, not surprising to see a large area of low pressure swirling in on itself. A front coming into the southwestern parts of our state tonight will bring some areas of snow and wind. We've had storm force winds there just south of the central Aleutian, so it looks like a lot of that will likely uh, subside just a little bit as we head into the overnight hours, but widespread gales should be expected, as well as heavy freezing spray along and just south of the ice edge. We're also looking at some areas of freezing spray across the Cook Inlet region and just to the east of that. We have a remnant area of low pressure here still dawdling across the north and eastern Gulf and enough so that we've got some light rain and fog across some parts of the inside passages and outer coast of southeast. More clouds than just about anything else right now. Across the interior, it's a clear, dry, and cold sky. It looks like that wind will continue to flow from east to west as high pressure sitting here across the northern Yukon and northern parts of the eastern interior. With that, that easterly wind is feeding into low pressure, which is nothing more than a vacuum on our weather map right now, literally sucking in that seriously cold air across the interior. And when those winds crank up, well, that's when we get into the wind chill values of 40, 50, even 60, maybe 70 below. As we look at the progression of this low pressure system as it travels to the north and east, we'll likely see this spin into the central Aleutians and kind of get hung up there as we get into your Friday and Saturday. That's going to stretch a boundary all across the state, and on the south side of that will be a milder, not warm, but milder uh, and unsettled air. On the north side, it still looks to be fairly dry, though you may see some more clouds. Here's a weather map. As we see it today, the low pressure system sits across the Copper River Valley into Prince William Sound, and kind of noses its way into Kodiak. North of this is where the really cold air is, and all of that air flowing along that boundary is moving out the west coast into the Bering Sea. 
Uh, to the west, 956 millibar low has that purple line all wrapped in on itself. That is an occluded front, and that means that cold and warm air is getting swirled in and mixed up on itself. The main action with this weather system will shift quickly to the western Gulf and then reinforce more active weather and unsettled uh, rain and snow across the southeast as we get into the rest of the weekend. As we go ahead in time tonight, watch for that 968 millibar low to remain west of the Pribilovs out ahead of it and south. Rain and snow showers there on the north side, a better chance for snow showers. Nothing too fierce out there, but if you're looking for accumulating snow, there may be some light amounts there across south and western parts of Alaska into Bristol Bay. Around Kodiak Island, low pressure takes over here at 997 millibars, and you can see our purple line is back. That occlusion will be slowly moving across southeastern Alaska as we get into uh, Friday and Saturday and into the weekend. Periods of rain and snow showers should be expected, as well as some gusty winds from time to time. If we're looking for gusty wind, watch for wind to come up around the Alaska Range and uh, parts of Tanita Pass and the Copper River Valley may have kind of a, a blustery go of it as we go into Friday and Saturday. High pressure sits at 1,031 millibars and that should keep the air locked down across Arctic Village and points north and areas of low clouds and fog might be expected there as well. Out across the west, a 973 millibar low on Friday will keep westerlies moving across the Aleutians. Those big southerly winds won't be back for just a little while. Low pressure creeps north and east into the northern Gulf there at 993 millibars, and the winds will come up a little bit more from the south for southeastern Alaska by the end of the week. Watch for periods of snow across Haines and Skagway into Yakutat, and maybe just outside of Prince William Sound trying to nose its way into Cordova. A better chance for light accumulating snow will continue across southwestern Alaska, generally north of uh, King Salmon and Dillingham all the way up toward Bethel. North of that it looks pretty dry, but the winds may be strong enough to blow some uh, more recent snow around across parts of uh, the Koyukuk Valley and west toward Nome. The wind will still be blowing around the Chukchi Coast, and that means wind chill warnings may still be in effect for your area as we go through the weekend. No big change on that as we go through Saturday either. High pressure moves a little bit further to the east. That keeps the pressure gradient still tight across parts of south, uh, the southern parts of the mainland, Copper River Valley expected. Uh, and then out to the west of the Pribilovs, a 984 millibar low there. Uh, you can see the snow, a better chance, and a little more wind here south of the Bering Strait all the way out towards St. Matthew. And north of the ice edge, just south of it, uh, looks to be unsettled, cold, with a wind from the west and south as we get into your Saturday and likely Sunday. Rain and snow showers south of the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, and still unsettled for southeast with kind of sloppy weather there, but not a big surge of cold air for most of the southeastern chain. Here's a look at temperatures as we go into Friday morning. Remember, this is air temperature, not the wind chill. That's a lot worse than what we're looking at right here. The actual thermometer readings will be close to 32 below in Fairbanks, anywhere from 35 to 40 below across the North Slope. Nome looking at 6 below, Savunga, Gamble all about 5 to 10 below, uh, 5 below in McCoryuk. St. Paul, St. George closer to 30 above, that's plus 30. Unalaska and Dutch Harbor about 35, 26 in Kodiak. And the Gulf Coast regions in the 20s and 30s, uh, most areas south of Sitka to Ketchikan and Annette will be close to, if not just a hair above freezing. Friday afternoon, we see temperatures climbing to about 10 to 15 below around the middle Tanana Valley to Tanana itself. Eagle and Northway also pushing 15 to 20 below. South of the Alaska Range, look for high temperatures in the teens, including Talkeetan at 15. Copper Center, Golcana, you're looking at about one below. Kenai and uh, Homer in the teens and 20s, 34 in Kodiak and 30s, maybe lower 40s for parts of southern and outer coastal southeast. Southwest, look for temps around 7 in Bethel, King Salmon and Dillingham in the teens and 20s, Nome 1 below, Kotzebue look for 15 below as we head into Friday afternoon. A quick check of Saturday morning shows 45 below around Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, 0 around Talkeetna, Kodiak 28, Juno looking at 31, and as we get into the afternoon on Saturday, a little bit of a temperature recovery across the north, but most uh, likely daytime temperatures will be anywhere from 30 to 40 below with a wind chill pushing 50 to 70 below once again. One below in Nome, 12 below in Fairbanks, anywhere from 10 to 30 above, again 11 to about 30 around the Bristol Bay region, 31 around King Salmon and Dillingham, 37 for Kodiak, 36 falls. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Taking a look at flying weather for Friday morning, we see IFR all the way from Kodiak Island up through the coastal YK Delta and points west, including the western Aleutians and most of the Alaska Peninsula. But the big story is going to be VFR conditions from the Panhandle all the way to the Arctic coast for pretty much the entirety of the Alaska mainland. 
For Friday afternoon, we do see IFR developing over the northern Gulf and into the Panhandle and sticking around from the northern Alaska Peninsula out to about St. Matthew Island and points further west, including the far western Aleutians. Conditions improving over much of the rest of the Aleutians, though, to marginal for Friday afternoon. Saturday morning, IFR still over that Kodiak Island to Alaska Peninsula to up to Nunavak Island and points west and some IFR still in the northern Gulf off the Panhandle coast, as well as some developing over the Arctic coast areas around Ukiagbek, but mostly MVFR conditions for the rest of the Alaska Aleutians, as well as the northern Gulf. For Saturday afternoon, some improvement over by the Panhandle to VFR for the southern Panhandle and MVFR for the northern Panhandle and northern Gulf coast, Still IFR for much of the YK Delta and points west out into the Bering Sea. Some IFR as well for the southern Alaska Peninsula and just south of the western portions of the Aleutian chain. Looking at your passes, Anaktuvik VFR, most of these are going to be VFR uh, for Friday. So Adigan VFR, Merrill and Lake Clark VFR on Friday, Rainy and Windy Passes VFR on Friday, Isabel and Mentasta VFR on Friday, Tanita VFR as well. But once we get down to Portage, we do start to see some changes. VFR in the morning at Portage, but marginal conditions in the afternoon, mostly on that east side of Portage Pass. And then Chilkoot and White VFR for Friday morning, but deteriorating Friday afternoon to IFR. Taking a look at freezing levels, we see that surface freezing level stretching all the way from the Southern Alaska Peninsula into the Northern Gulf and over into the panhandle near the terrain with warmer air coming up into the northern gulf from the south. Taking a look at icing for Friday, lots of areas of isolated moderate stretching from the panhandle all the way through the northern gulf into the YK Delta, points west including much of the Aleutians. A little bit of a break for the southern Alaska Peninsula, some areas of considerable moderate between 3,000 and 6,000 feet for the peninsula stretching across the northern gulf above 2,000 feet for that area from about Bethel to Kodiak Island as well as from about St. Paul westward in the Bering Sea. Looking at the jet stream, pretty simple view for Friday, 70 knots out of the west just south of the Aleutian chain, 130 knots out of the west for the north gulf down to 120 knots out of the west coming into the Pacific northwest of the Conus. A second jet streak uh, over Alberta out of the north about 80 knots. 9,000 foot winds, our main player is going to be this low over the western Aleutians, just north of the western Aleutians with 45 knots on the south side of that low, 30 knots on the north side. And then another low over the Canadian border of the mainland with pretty light winds around it, 20 knots for the Arctic coast, 10 knots out of the north for uh, the west coast and then 20 to 30 knots over the Alaska Peninsula and about 30 knots out of the west coming into the Panhandle. For 3,000 foot winds, we still have that low pressure system pretty much in that same area, just north of the western Aleutians. So about 45 knots out of the east on the north side of that low, about 50 knots out of the west for many, much of the western Aleutians right over there. 35 knots out of the southwest over the Alaska Peninsula and about 25 knots out of the southeast coming into Kenai Peninsula. Not a whole lot of wind over the Alaska Range up to the Yukon River, about five knots up there. 30 knots out of the east between the Brooks Range and the Arctic Coast and then about 30 knots out of the west for the Alaska Panhandle. Taking a look at turbulence for Friday, some considerable moderate over the Panhandle below about 5,000 feet. A couple of other spots as well between about the Brooks Range and the Yukon River over north central Alaska below about 3,000 feet, as well as St. Lawrence Island, considerable moderate turbulence are below about 3,000 feet. And then for much of the Aleutian chain up to the southern Alaska Peninsula below about 4,000 feet, we'll see that considerable moderate turbulence with some isolated moderate around it. Stay tuned for marine
It's Valentine's week, and like your local haunts, the skies are full of love stories too, like Orion and the Pleiades. The Pleiades are named for seven sisters, and legend says Orion fell in love with the young sisters, pining and chasing after them for 12 years before Zeus turned them all into doves so they could fly away and become the cluster of stars. Now Orion and the Pleiades move across the sky, Orion chasing them still. To find the story in the sky, look southwest for Orion and use the three stars of his belt to draw a rough line toward Aldebaran in the constellation Taurus. Keep going and you'll see six of the sisters. The seventh is too dim to see with the naked eye. Don't be like Orion. Tell your person you like them. Then when you're out on a date this week, share the story while you all keep looking up. Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills, where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. 
That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only gonna get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Well, first, let's talk about what it's not. It's not a floating island of trash, like a garbage dump or a landfill. It's also not the only patch. They exist all throughout the ocean, and the Pacific Garbage Patch just happens to be the most famous. Garbage patches are large areas of marine debris concentration that are formed by rotating ocean currents called gyres, kind of like big whirlpools that suck things in. A garbage patch is made up of tiny plastic pieces called microplastics that are less than five millimeters long. It's more like pepper flakes swirling in a soup than something you can skim off the surface. You might come across some larger items like plastic bottles, but it's possible to sail through a garbage patch and not see anything. And they're a big problem for the ocean and us. People often ask why we can't just scoop up all the marine debris in the ocean. And the answer is, unfortunately, it's just not that simple. The first challenge is the sheer size of these garbage patches. They're huge. They're constantly moving with ocean currents. And there's debris from the ocean surface all the way down to the sea floor. Not to mention all the marine life we would disrupt if we tried to just scoop up debris. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention and we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep trash out of the ocean in the first place. And we can participate in things like shoreline cleanups. It's a lot easier to deal with debris before it gets to the ocean. Because until we stop marine debris at the source, we'll just be cleaning it up forever. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, I'm meteorologist Amanda Bowen with your look at today's sea ice edge. Those easterly winds have continued to push the sea ice towards the west. And that sea ice edge remains about 55 nautical miles north of St. Paul Island. We're looking for some very cold northerly winds to return this weekend. And if those winds stick around long enough, we could see some ice on the north side of St. Paul Island as early as the end of next week. Taking a look at southeast winds and seas, winds generally out of the south and southeast, 20 knots in the northern gulf to 30 knots in the southern gulf, 15 to 20 knots for those inside waterways out of the north at 25 knots over the northern waterways near Skagway and Haines. For Saturday, winds doing a complete shift to out of the west on the Gulf side, 15 to 25 knots, still 20 knots out of the south generally for the inside waterways, still out of the north at 20 knots for the northern waterways. For south central, winds generally out of the northeast, 20 to 25 knots over the Gulf, around 10 knots in Prince William Sound, 10 to 25 knots in Cook Inlet and down into Kamishak Bay. Looking into tomorrow, not a ton of change. Winds actually coming down just a little bit out of the west at 20 knots for the Gulf, 10 to 15 knots continuing in the Cook Inlet area. For the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island areas, we have a couple of different stories. We have winds out of the southwest and west on the Pacific side, but if you go further north over the northern peninsula, we've got winds out of the northeast at around 15 knots. So we've got two different systems in place for today. Seas on the Pacific side, 11 to 17 feet, around nine feet on the north side of the peninsula. For Saturday, winds shifting a little more consistent across the area out of the southwest at 20 to 30 knots sees pretty consistent in that 11 to 17 foot range on the Pacific side, increasing a little bit on the Bering Sea side to about 13 feet. For the Aleutians, 
for Friday, winds out of the west and southwest, 30 to 35 knots for the eastern and central Aleutians, 35 to 40 knots for those western Aleutians. Seas are the big, big issue for Friday, 22 to 26 feet on the Pacific side for those central Aleutians, although those will be coming down from what we're seeing right now. And if we look into Saturday, they come down even more. So 14 to 17 foot seas, basically across the board, winds out of the southwest in that 25 to 30 knot range. For the west coast, we have generally offshore flow, same thing as we talked with the sea ice pushing it west. Those winds out of the east in the 25 to 30 knot range, a little bit different down near the Pribilofs, out of the south at about 25 knots, being affected by that low pressure down by the Aleutians. For Saturday, winds still generally offshore, but a little bit more of a northerly component we're starting to see. So 20 to 35 knots out of the northeast with those highest winds further west into the Bering Sea. For the Arctic coast, winds still offshore for Friday out of the east around 10 knots along the north slope and 20 to 30 knots for the west coast. Looking ahead to Saturday, not a whole lot of change in those wind directions, still easterly and northeasterly. 15 to 20 knots, so increasing a little bit along the north slope. 15 to 35 knots along the west coast with those highest winds coming out of the Bering Strait. Recapping our weather, for tonight, we are looking at continued precipitation in the Panhandle area with snow over the high terrain and some mixed precipitation over the coastal areas. We've got a low that's over Kodiak Island that's going to be moving off to the northeast, bringing some precipitation along with it. The big player is going to be that 968 low just north of the western Aleutians and that trough that it's going to be dragging across the Alaska Peninsula. We're going to see some increased winds with that, as we saw in the marine forecast, as well as lots of mixed precipitation, some rain just south of it in the western Aleutians, and then snow spreading into the YK Delta, as well as the Alaska Peninsula. For Friday, that low pressure uh, moves north a bit, so that's what's going to be bringing those seas down for the Aleutians, and very cold continuing for the northern interior. I'm meteorologist Amanda Bowen. Thanks so much for watching Alaska Weather. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.